Hello and welcome to TidyX 131. TidyX is a screencast where we go through and explain how our code works. My name's Ellis Hughes. And my name's Patrick Ward. As always, if you can, like and subscribe on the YouTube channel. Uh, that not only helps us out, but it also makes sure that when you post a question or comment, we see it and we get back to you. Additionally, if you enjoy the work we're doing, you feel like it's positively impacted you, we do have a Patreon page and we're always grateful for anything that uh, you're willing to offer. That said, why Let's don't we jump into 131, uh, the Spider-Man meme. The Spider-Man uh, meme. Hey, that. wait a minute. So uh, <laughs> the Spider-Man meme is a meme where two Spider-Men are pointing at each other because in this situation here, we're going to pretend that we have two different players that have the same name and they're pointing at each other going, wait a minute. No, I'm Tom Smith. No, I'm Tom Smith. Sorry. Very tangential. But Patrick, why are we doing this sort of episode? So this is a common problem that you'll face when building shiny apps, uh, particularly like, for example, let's say we're dealing with college baseball or sorry, college basketball or college football. It's highly probable across that many teams that you're going to find players with the same name. And if you have a you know shiny app and let's say you're using that shiny app to grab information about players, um, if you don't account for the fact that you might have two Tom Smiths in there, you'll get some wonky output uh, kicked back to you. For, and, and obviously, you know, you know, curating shiny apps, you want to make sure that it's really clean and easy for the user to get their information and, and understand. So uh, we're going to go through two different ways that we kind of came up with um, to solve this. Uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to just build some fake data. So, of course, we'll load Tidyverse and Shiny since those are the two primary packages we need for right now for this first version. Um, our data is going to be structured in like the... Kind of the common way you'd probably find it in a database we've got some information here about the players so this contains things like the player's name their team their position and then uh, a little bit of information about their player id so assuming that you've assigned them some sort of unique player id um, that's going to be really helpful for identifying that one tom smith is not like the other um, on top of player info then we also have some information that we'll call their vitals which is basically stats stuff. So this table doesn't contain anything about the names or teams of the players. All it simply contains is the player ID because that's all we need to worry about when we're trying to join data. And it's got some arbitrary value of their performance, maybe like a score. Uh, it's got their height, their weight, the number of goals scored. So we're dealing with soccer players here, for example. So we have now two data sets. And within this first Shiny app, uh, I'll walk through and then Elsa will walk through the second. Um, we're going to uh, uh, we're going to create a unique ID. Uh, we already have a player ID, and that is a unique identifier. But what we're going to do in this first app version is we're going to create a unique identifier that is an input for the user to select so that they can make sure that they're getting the unique Tom Smith that they're looking for. So we create this uh, player info combined element, which takes player info and we use the unite function, which is basically a nifty way of combining together several columns into one single column. So we're gonna call this new column unique player info because that's what it is. And it's going to take the info from the player info data set, data frame, and it's gonna to combine together player, team, and position all separated with a hyphen and remove equals false just says, hey, don't remove those three rows. If we had remove equals true, we would just get returned a single column data frame with a column called unique player info. But we're just going to keep those so that we always have those as sort of like a quick, um, a quick, a little, quick and dirty gut check. Sometimes if you're dealing with a ton of data, you want to make sure that you keep these things around for any gotchas down the road where you're like, oh, that's going to be a problem. Okay, yeah. so now we've got our unique info. Let's jump into the UI. So remember, uh, we've, we've talked Shiny App several times before. You're going to build a UI first and then a server. UI is specifying how we want the viewer to see the page. It's a fluid page. We've got a sidebar panel. The sidebar panel is where we're going to let them define what it is they want to see. So they're going to be allowed to select a player. The input ID, what we're conditioning on, is going to be called is, is the player ID. And the choices that we're giving the user to search from is that new unique player info. So remember, that's the concatenated name, position, and team. We've got multiple equals to false because we don't want to see multiple people within our output table. 
and selected equals null because we're not in, we're not partial to having any one person selected when the user first opens up the app. We don't care about that. So it's just going to be blank. In the main panel, which is where you're going to contain your plots or your outputs, um, this we're going to just have a simple table. And this is just a base R table. We're going to do table output, output ID, we call TBL. And the H1 is just a, a way of giving a title. So it's called uh, player vitals, right? yeah. something like just their information. So yeah. we run the UI and we should be good to go. And now we jump into the server and this is where the heavy lifting occurs. It's going to be a function that takes an input and then an output it gets uh, spit out. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we get the player vitals into a reactive data frame, a reactive data frame, because as the user selects, we want this reactive to continually update and say, oh, that's the new information I want. Let's go ahead and grab that. Uh, the, the rec input player ID is important because if we don't have this, this is saying, if you're going to do anything before you show a table, require that the user has specified a player ID. Remember, they're selecting that player ID and we set it to null. So when it shows up null, if we don't have this, you just get this ugly red writing on the screen that says like no player ID selected uh, or something like that. Unable to run. Blah, 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 unable blah. to run. And it, it's not broken. Once the person selects a player ID, it'll do its job, but it just looks really ugly for the user. And sometimes they might look at the page initially and be like, oh, something's wrong with this and not even proceed further. So we always throw this in at the top. So it's just gonna be blank. The PID is basically us just grabbing the player ID from our player info combined data frame that we created with the concatenated information using that unite function. We just pull that out so it's a single element. And then the player vitals, we're just gonna filter that. So we're just basically saying, hey, in the player vitals table, whatever player ID, whatever player that the user selected, go ahead and grab their data. Cool. And then we've got some reactive data. This is the easy part. All we literally have to do is say, render table require that data frame, that, that reactive data frame. So every time they change it, it'll change this. Um, so if there's, if, if there's no data required, it's just gonna be a blank page. Um, once we have some data in there, once they've selected something, boom, there we go. We're good to go. It's going to spit out our data table, and we're going to go ahead and run this. Stringy, shiny app. We're going to set it up so it launches in the browser, so it looks yeah. uh, looks all pretty and nice for y'all. But there you go. So now what we got here is that shiny app that we just made here on the left side here is that select input that we've got. So they can click on that, and they can see all the different potential players that uh, they want to look at. So we've got... Bob Franklin, Joe, Sam, Tom, and Tom. But you can see we got both Toms mm -hmm. here, but they are uniquely identified. We don't yeah. have to worry about grabbing the wrong one. And you can also go into that uh, that select box and delete it and start typing. So you don't have to select. You could start typing Tom Smith. It's going to find both of them. And now you can select the one that you're interested in. Yeah. So that's... Uh, that's one potential solution. Ellis, uh, do you have a different way to solve this? Yeah, yeah, I can step us through that one now. So this one is going to have a slightly different input scenario, um, and we're going to use a package called DT. So DT is uh, gives us access to data tables. Um, that it's from, well, pause it now. Uh, then it was our studio, so, so it kind of redirects to the, the our studio GitHub. But it's a it's a really cool library. If you've never used it before, I highly suggest if you're doing stuff for um, your shiny apps or even in your R Markdown, take a look at DT. It's going to provide a really cool functionality in an HTML widget that um, it's kind of hard to replicate elsewhere. Yeah, H hands down the best table package I've ever used for apps like this. Hands yeah. down. Yeah. So uh, in our scenario uh, situation here. Our UI is actually going to be relatively simple. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to have the fluid page here. Similar to what Patrick said, we're going to have a sidebar panel, which is the, the on the left-hand side, that gray outlined area that we just saw. And in there, I'm going to say, I want a data table output. Um, and the ID for that data table output is going to be player select, ta player select table. And so uh, later in the server, we're going to have an output called player select table that's going to be a DT that'll be populating that with values. Mm -hmm. On the right hand side, we're, or then, then we have the main panel, which is like the right hand side of the Shiny app. 
And just like what Patrick had, we're gonna have that table output. I forgot to copy while we were writing this, the player vitals. So let's uh -huh. add that in. So yeah, H1 is heading level one, which is like the largest type of heading that you can put in. So let's create that UI. And now we need to go into the server. So the server is a little bit more complicated because we have that DT that's going on, but it's gonna provide us some interesting things that we can do. So again, it's a, a ser the server is a function that accepts input and output. Um, within here, we're gonna have the output and we're gonna have it going to the ID of player select table, which is supposed to be in our sidebar panel that is supposed to be the data table output. Here, the input value of this is the render data table. So this is what's going to convert our data table into HTML for us. We're going to take that raw player info uh, data frame that we've got here. We're going to select to remove player ID because we're not trying to present that to our stakeholders. They don't really care what the player ID that we have. That's a background thing. That's like for the data people to deal with. They want to know Tom Smith. They don't want to know that Tom Smith has a player ID one, two, three, four, five, six. That is not what they care about. We'll then pipe that into our DT data table. And then we're going to attach several different options here to uh, allow us to do interactivity. So this first option here is selection equals single. So what that's going to do is it's going to allow our users of the Shiny app to be able to click on the data table that gets presented in the Shiny app but it'll only allow them to click on one. I think by default it allows them to click on multiple. You can also set it to be able to click on none. So this is set with the selection option here. You should definitely check out, if you're using data table, the help pages, both uh, included in the package, but more helpfully on their website. There's a ton of, ton of information there that they just can't cram into the man page. Uh, we're gonna set row names to be false because the row names mean nothing in our data set and by default it's gonna show them. Um, and then finally, I'm going to set this option length change equals false data table does allow you to change the number of rows by default. It prevents before it paginates. Um, I'll get into that once I show you the data table, but I didn't want to present that. I just wanted to, wanted it to use the default 10 because we only have a, a couple players here next, just like Patrick, we're going to create the, the reactive D that is gonna hold the player vitals of the player we've selected. Uh, like Patrick, we're gonna be using the rec function, but instead of using the input dollar sign uh, player ID from the select thing that he used, because we've set this data table to be able to be clicked on, we have some crosstalk capabilities. So we're basically able to ingest information from people having clicked on the data table. And what we want is what row did they click on from our data table here? So we use input, uh, which is of the player A. So we use input, and then we use the ID of the data table that we care about, in this case, player select table. And then we append after that underscore rows selected. And so what that's going to do is that's going to return to us a vector of what rows the person, or what row that our user has selected. And so then we can use that information. We know the player info order is the same between the two of these. So we're just going to do a simple slice. Then we're going to pull out player ID. And then just like in Patrick's Shiny app, we're going to filter to keep the player ID that was contained in the player info column. We know is the ID of what we want in the player ID column from the player vitals. So we'll filter to make sure they're the same. Again, stakeholders don't actually care about what the player ID is. So we kick that out. And now we've got our reactive D. We use that to then render the table. We require a value there. And so now we can go and generate the um, server function. Now we can throw it into our Shiny app and have it pop open in our viewer here. And so now we've got this left-hand side, rather than it being a drop-down menu, we've got a nice table to view. The cool thing about this is they can just automatically, they can just start clicking on this and it'll automatically start showing the information on the right here. If we wanted to you know, provide additional information, we could actually print which player they've selected here. The other cool thing is they can just start typing a search term in the very top here, because it's a data table. Data table allows for searching. So you can say, I want Tom Smith. 
helps if I space. add a space in there. Yeah, space there. Uh, and uh, there you go. We've got our two Tom Smiths, and they can they can alternate between the two of those. Uh, and they, they understand which Tom Smith, because we have the team in position, uh, we, we can offer capabilities to do like sorting here. If there were multiple, like if we had more than 10, it would be pagination. So this is because we've got less than 10, that's only one page, but it, they could then click through here to then view additional players. So there's all this functionality. Or, or you could done. set it to be longer. We removed the set limit, we could set the limit to be 100. If we had 90 or 100 people, we could set it to whatever, depending on how much uh, real estate, so to speak, that you wanted to occupy in that left-hand column, you could set it to whatever you'd like. Yeah, and mm -hmm. that is how you might be able to use data table to not have to create your unique ID and concatenate them together, but just put the power in a nice table for them, for, for your uh, stakeholders to be able to play around with. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that are two different ways that you can approach using Shiny to uh, look at your player IDs. Yeah, cool. I don't think I have any else to add. Do you, Patrick? Nope, I think this is a, yeah, super useful stuff. Hopefully uh, everybody else feels the same. Yeah, um, if you like what we did here with the Shiny app, if, you, if you've got an idea, if you've got a Shiny issue that you've got, uh, a, a problem that you're dealing with, or, or a question about how it might work, drop a comment down below. We love to see them. We got a lot of comments on the last video. Uh, and that was a lot of fun. So keep on dropping those. We, we definitely read those and incorporate them into future episodes. Um, so with that, I guess we're going to call it. Thank you all so much for joining us for 131 episodes. As always, my name is Ellis Hughes. You can find me on Twitter at, at Ellis underscore Hughes. And my name is Patrick Ward. You can find me on Twitter at, at OSP Patrick. We're both on Twitter at, at tidy underscore explained or on Gmail at tidy.explained at gmail.com. As we've said a few times, uh, the most easiest, bestest way to get in touch with us is to like and subscribe on that YouTube channel. Drop your comments down below. And as always, uh, we do have a Patreon page. If you feel like our work has positively impacted you, we love doing it. And if you'd like to contribute something and buy us a coffee or a uh, alcoholic beverage, um, we are also very grateful for that. All right. Thank you all so much and keep on exploring your world. <laughs>